question for you. How many of you listen to the news throughout your lifetime? Do you pay attention to the news? CBC, CTV, I'm not talking about your local channel for the weather. I'm talking about world event news. There's something very interesting that I have known for years and years, but have not seen it come out like we see it now. The incredible deception the news media has brought upon the people. Most news channels have a spin on their news the way they want you to see it and not necessarily the way it's happening. This is why everybody hates Donald Trump. The news media hates him. Why? Because he knows that they're spinning the story their way, so he goes on Twitter and tells it the way it is. And that becomes very, very interesting. I got two channels that I like to sometimes do go back and forth. The Fox News, actually three channels, Fox News, CBC, and CNN. 
and you'd listen to a story on Fox News, you'd listen to the president as it happens. They would sometimes have it on TV, and then you switch to CNN. The strange little twist they give the story, and then you come on down here to the great Canadian news channel, CBC, which is an extension of, of BBC, it's basically lies. They're spinning a story the way they want you to hear it, not the way it happens. This is why there is such an incredible confusion. Smith Wigglesworth, how many of you know who that is? He was in the 1800s, a man of God. And I listened to a guy on YouTube who went to visit him. I guess he wanted to get to know Smith Wigglesworth. I like the guy who was into the power of the Holy Ghost. And you know, he came there, knocked on the door, had a newspaper, and of course in England you always carry an umbrella. So Smith Wigglesworth asked, what is that in your, in your hand? I had an umbrella. No, 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 the other hand, a newspaper. And Smith Wigglesworth in the 1800s said, leave it outside. That is full of lies. So in the 1800s, they were already spinning the news the way they wanted you to hear it. Why? It is because they had an agenda. I'll give you an interesting story here, which we all know happened. Remember the gay parade, the homosexual parade here in Steinbeck, the first one? How big it was? It was all over the news in the States, in Toronto, in the front page newspaper. How humongous that parade was. What they didn't tell them was they were shipping people in from Texas, from BC, from wherever to join that parade. Where was our, where was our uh, um, mayor, he was having a barbecue in his backyard. Where was, was the top guy from Ted Falk from, uh, he was attending a yard sale. But they had everything written out how successful that gay or that homosexual parade was. In the meantime, hardly anybody from Steinbeck showed up. Have you noticed it petered out? So they're telling you what they want you to hear, not what's actually happening. And this is what God tells us in his word is going to happen in the last days. They will say wrong is right and right is wrong. It is unbelievable. I listened to a guy where that shooting was, the last one in Virginia. Mr. Trump, he was on his way to this church, and he phoned ahead and said, we're coming. It was a surprise. We want to come and pray. It was Sunday. We, I want to come and pray in your church for the people who are affected by this massacre that was. And the pastor of that church was taken by surprise. He didn't have time to think, so he prayed for Donald Trump. And guess what? Because of his people in his church, he later apologized for praying for Donald Trump because it might offend some of his seat warmers, his bench warmers. Personally, that guy shouldn't be a pastor. He is an imposter. He is a hireling. He is afraid of what people will say. Almost reminds me, anybody ever watched the movie Saving Private Ryan, the guy that was supposed to bring the ammunition to the people, he was so scared, he just sat and hearted himself. That's what he reminded me of. And this is the type of people we have 
in the pulpits today, and people are wondering what church is all about. Well, today we will go into a little study on end times, and I'll explain some of the things that are happening, and it's incredible. But before we get into it, let's rise and ask the Lord for blessing. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you will bless us today. Let the power of your Spirit rest upon us, that we may understand and see the signs of the times. I ask you, Lord, to anoint this message. Bless the listener in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Will the church go through the tribulation? If you watch what's going on all over the world, that should give you an answer. The church of Jesus Christ is not going to go into the judgment of God, that God is one, going to one of these days come to judge the snowflakes with. Because everybody will be under the influence of the demonic realm during the seven years of tribulation on this earth. It's going to be an interesting time. But God says, don't allow people to mislead you. Study the word. Don't just listen to anybody. It says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 1, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit, that's a demon telling you something, nor by word, somebody telling you something, or by letter as from us, as the day of Christ is at hand. So he's warning us, don't listen to anybody, but to the word of God. And there's other reasons there. He says that the coming of Jesus, not, nobody knows the day or the hour. So you cannot even point to that. I remember a guy on radio he was uh, preaching every week, or was it every night? I think it was once a week. In 1988, on this certain day, there was supposed to be the rapture, and I heard him preaching, and he had everybody's attention. If I, next week, he said, I am not going to be on this program because the rapture will have happened and I'll be gone. Next week he wasn't on the program, but I didn't leave with him. So wherever he went, I hope it was to heaven. But he never showed up again. And he had a lot of followers. People were paying him money and all sorts of stuff. So it's interesting how deception operates. But God says, don't listen to those guys. Be at ease, be at peace, go about, study the word. Because it says in, um, in uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, let no man deceive you by any means. For that, that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. I used to wondering about the falling away. We see a lot of the church falling away. The homosexual community is now basically the strongest I've ever seen it. Churches are caving into their demands. And I have seen preachers calling themselves homosexual preachers. Talking about the Apostle Paul, they're being questioned. The Apostle Paul has this written down in Romans chapter 1. Well, the Apostle Paul didn't have the revelations we have now. The revelation that God has given us has allowed us to do what we're doing. What revelation are they listening to? They're listening to a spirit called an angel of light. If you ever hear anybody saying he's hearing from God and he is not dead on with scripture and he can't prove it to you in scripture, that person is hearing from an angel of light who may sound 
like God. Remember Brother Brenham? They used to call him. He was listening to an angel of light. He didn't go by scripture to prove that angel of light. So this can happen to any one of us. We have to go by scripture. That has to be our focus point. Without that focus point, you can go off to the right or off to the left. There shall come a falling away. It is un unimaginable what we're seeing happening now down in the States. They are basically throwing God out of everything. And homosexuality is the big topic. I was watching Joe Biden the other day. How many of you know who that guy is? He's changed his mind on whether government money should be used for abortion. Up till now, according to him, it was a definite no. You do not use government money for abortion. And yesterday, or was it the day before, he changed his mind. The times have changed. What times have changed? Like the Bible says, in the last days, they shall listen to who? Seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. And this is what's happening right in front of our eyes. There is a falling away from the principles and the laws of the Ten Commandments, left and right. And God says, when you see this happening, know for a fact, time is closing in where I will come back. When will he come back? Second Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 6. And now you know that what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity does already work. It's been here quite a long time already since the beginning. Only now he who lets will let until he be taken out of the way. Then shall the wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall be destroyed with the brightness of his coming. Okay, here we have something holding back the evil. Over the years, since the 90s, I've been listening to people to this certain ministry that was explaining the agenda of the world system. The Illuminati, the Council of 13, uh, George Soros, all these guys had a plan. What was the plan? A one world government. How are they going to bring it to fruition? Through influencing the media. That's what the media's agenda is. Explaining things the way they want you to believe. It is incredible the lies they're telling the people. And the most amazing part is how they have programmed the people to think. They walk amongst the streets in New York. They ask basic, simple questions. They ask the people, who fought in the Battle of Britain? Was it Korea? On and on they ask people questions. They have absolutely no idea what's going on. Why? Because they're being fed lies. They're being programmed. They're being brainwashed. And this is what the Antichrist is waiting for. He's going to come on the scene He'll take over the reins. It'll be handed to him and say, now take over. They're all yours. But in the meantime, the one that's keeping it back will keep it back until he is taken out of the way. Who are those that are keeping it back? They are the ones that are speaking the truth. Did you know that we're the worst enemy of the world system? Did you know that the world system would rather take a Muslim who will take off their head instead of a Christian who will give them a headache? 
the world system can deal with somebody that can take off their heads, but they can't deal with the Holy Spirit who is forever convicting them and talking to them. That's the problem. They hate the Christians. We are the most hated as far as the world system is concerned. But at the same time while we're hated, we're keeping back the judgment of God from this planet. And they don't seem to realize it. That we're the reasons they're not being destroyed. Why do we see all these earthquakes? Why do we see the start of humongous floods and strange weather patterns? The Bible teaches over and over and over, especially in the book of Psalms. The land vomited out its inhabitants because of the iniquity of the people. It's not global warming. Global warming, if it's there, it's caused because of sin. So on and on it goes. And one of these days, the one holding back will be taken out of the way. And then the Antichrist will come on the scene and the judgment of God will start operating on this planet. Have you studied what the judgments of God are during the tribulation? It's so horrific that the Bible teaches us men's hearts will fail them for fear. People will have heart attacks left and right because of what's happening all around them. And it's starting to happen already. People are starting to wonder, what is the use of going onward? Do you know how many suicides there are amongst the young people already? It's an epidemic that they're keeping hidden. Why? Because they don't want to scare people. First Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 1. But of the times and the season, brethren, you have no need I write unto you. For you yourself perfectly know that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. He'll come very quickly. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. This world system is going to be judged. We can see the incredible corruption and the deception. When I study the business world, how it works in the world today, everything is done through deceit. Most businesses operate through deceit and trying to get the best of the other guy. If a guy retires at the age of 50, somewhere along the, uh, with enough money, somewhere along the line, he did some deceitful stuff unless he inherited it somewhere. So God is warning us, these things will come. These things will happen. But it also says when they shall say peace and safety, that can mean two things. There's going to be a relative peace and safety or they're crying out for peace and safety. My attitude or my idea is this. We are now seeing a president that is bringing about peace and safety in all the world. World leaders are listening to him. There's something happening in the world system that brings a calm upon this planet. And I believe there's going to be a pouring out of the latter rains. The Holy Spirit will spread over the whole world. And the Bible teaches us those that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So if he's calling you and you're not sure of yourself, Grab a hold of that call because there's one chance, this one lifetime, it's not going to come back. And once God is going to be finished, then sudden destruction will come upon this earth. It'll happen very quickly. 
You know, when you study what's going on in the world system today, the billions of people, the incredible technology that's going on, you wonder to yourself, how can that ever change? But it will change. It'll happen very quickly. And it could happen very soon. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, in verse 6, it tells us, in verse 4, uh, 4 to 6, But you, brethren, are not in darkness as they should overtake you as a thief. You are the children of light, the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of the darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. So these, we who know Jesus, we study the word of God and we anticipate, we know the stuff that's happening is written in the word of God. We can prophesy what's going to happen. You listen to, uh, to uh, um, Amir Safadi, the things that are happening in Israel, the nations that are lining up to come against Israel, we know it's with the signs of the times, the earthquakes, the strange weather patterns, Russia, Iran, uh, Turkey, all, everything's lining up. It's going to climax shortly. I don't know how long because I found out not to put a day or a time on anything that God does because God said to Abraham, you're going to have a child. And he waited and waited and waited and waited. And he said to Sarah, we're going to have, help him have a child. That's what happens when we get impatient. Let's just wait and watch. But let's make sure we are ready when he comes. He says, you're not in darkness. You know about these things. You talk to the average person that is in the world who's not a Christian. They haven't got a clue what's going on. They don't know. You talk to them about politics, they have no idea. You talk to them about the end times, they have no idea. You talk to them about Russia, they have absolutely no idea. You talk to them about the state of Israel, what's the state of Israel? Yes, they're there, what's the big deal? So they don't have any idea what's going on. We are privileged. We know the signs of the times. We know that Jesus could come at any moment. And that gives us an encouragement to hold on to Jesus, to get to know him, to have a walk with him so that we can rejoice in his coming. Because are we going through the tribulation? 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 in verse 9. God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's not talking about your soul salvation. It's talking about the tribulation. Because it, that scripture is nested right in. To the, into, in the First Thessalonians where it's talking about the Lord Jesus Christ coming back. So we're not appointed unto wrath. How long will it take God to do something? I'm amazed at how God operates. You see a guy, he's living for the devil. And this is how quick it can work. For those of us who are thinking, well, it'll take him time to do everything. No, you see a guy, I'll take myself for, for an example. One day I was walking alone, having no idea what Christianity was. I was basically doing my own stuff, seeking for a party, going out, living for the world. You know, everyday life. The next day, I was in the kingdom of God. And it only took about two seconds for God to transfer me from this kingdom to this one. How long did it take? Two seconds. Now listen to this. 
In Romans chapter 9 in verse 27, Isaiah also cried concerning Israel, do the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved, for he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness, because a short work will the Lord make upon this earth. So it's going to be very fast, very quickly. Are we ready for that? I'm telling you, I watch the news. I know what's going on all over the world. And I'm amazed at the blindness of the people that are running the world system. They haven't got any idea what is waiting in the wings. They want the one world government. They'll get a one world government. They want to, to uh, rule the people. They'll find out what it means to be ruled. They want to steal money. They'll find out what it means when money loses its value. What does the Bible say? They'll throw their money into the streets, their gold, their silver. Buy gold. Buy silver, the announcement go on TV. It has never been so low. And this will keep you through the hard times. No, the only thing that will keep you through the hard times is the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the one you're supposed to focus on. And he's the one that will keep us from the hour of temptation that shall come upon this planet. Yes, it's pretty bleak. When you look at it from the world's side, from the world's opinion, when you look into the future, it looks pretty bleak. But when I look at it from my position, I rejoice evermore. Why? Tomorrow I could be with my God in paradise. The other day I was having a talk with a friend of mine and his wife about the rapture. Oh, she says, I wish the rapture would be already. Oh, my goodness. And her husband said to her, dying is just like the rapture. You're there anyway. In that same amount of time, it takes a second. So why aren't you waiting for death? Why the rapture? I guess we don't want to experience death. We want to be changed. And one day it'll happen. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, the dead in Christ shall rise first. That's going to be something to watch. Then we which are alive and remain will look and say, whoa, look at that. We'll be changed in a split second. And then we're out of here. And let me tell you, for my part, it can't be fast enough. So oh, let the Lord open your heart to this. We're fast running out of time. If you don't believe me, watch the news on your little iPhone, not on the station, still tell you lies. Watch it on social media and you'll get half of it right. Let the Lord bless you, take your blessing. Amen. When you get to heaven as you surely will, if the Savior's name you after you have greeted those you love, the best who are standing round the throne, you may look for me, for I'll be there, I'll be there, I'll be there, you may look for me, for I'll be there, glory to Stand in a rapture on some starry night, gazing on some glorious view. You may look for me, for I'll be there. I'll be there. I'll be there. You may look for me, for I'll be there. Glory to Hear the ransoms with their hearts.
hearts of all shock and glory to his name. You may look for me, for I'll be there. I'll be there. I'll be there. You may look for me, for I'll be there. Glory to When you see the Savior who has brought you there, and with joy behold His face, you may look for me, for I'll be there, I'll be there, I'll be there, you may look for me, for I'll be there, hallelujah, glory. 